Hello, um, welcome to our webinar hosted by Forset. I'm Ia, a graphic designer and illustrator uh, at Forset. Today our topic uh, will be about the storytelling in animations. What principles we use when we create uh, animations. Um, and uh, for us as a team working on data visualization uh, and storytelling, uh, it's very important how we tell a story that is behind charts and numbers. Um, be it infographic or fact, um, static or interactive visualization or uh, animation. And the animation uh, is one of the tools that we often use um, for storytelling. Um, animation has a great ability to uh, tell you something uh, even without the words and show you something in a simple way. Uh, when we mention that we create animations very often, um, people think that we do something childish. Um, people used to think that the animations are created for children and it's about like uh, fantastic creatures, uh, fairy tales. Um, we have then, one, then we have to explain that um, animations are created for adults as well and it can be about anything complex. Started from uh, human rights to space, uh, astrophysics, um, annual reports. So more and more organizations are interested to introduce their uh, annual reports uh, through the animations. Animation, especially explanator one, um, should have a simple language. Uh, to say otherwise, everything we put in the animation should be shown and spoken in a simple way. Uh, imagine that we play with basketball um, and our ball is our message that we throw in basket. Basket is our audience. Accordingly, our mission is to deliver our message topic to the audience, um, interest them with the topic. If we complicate the plot, um, text, visual, uh, we will lose our audience. Um, people will see your animation and will not remember anything in the end or they will uh, start watching it and soon they will get bored and stop watching. So the animation shouldn't be uh, created for the sake of animation, but uh, it should be as a tool that helps you to understand the information. Every animation is a complex product um, containing several components such as um, scenario, illustration design, motion design, um, voiceover, sound and music effects. Each of them should be used carefully and shouldn't be overused. So let's go through the steps of making animation. It doesn't matter what topic we're talking about, um, it won't be comprehensive uh, and it surely won't be interesting for different groups of people. Um, therefore, we must always define uh, in advance uh, what is our target audience and what content will be interesting um, in their point of view. Uh, usually, when we receive the report, it consists of many of pages um, and various data. Even though uh, there might be lots of valuable information, uh, we must try our best to choose the um, main message and move extra details. Uh, it might be difficult to us and for our clients um, uh, to let the information go because the more we are involved in um, the report, the um, more uh, we think every detail is important. Um, but we shouldn't forget that we create animation not for us but uh, for the other people uh, that might not be interested in every detail. Um, and besides that, extra details will distract them to understand uh, the information and to understand the uh, main topic. Uh, so um, try to kill your darlings. After defining what we want to say, bringing it to needed condition, when we shorten the text uh, and know what uh, we want to show exactly, only after going through the steps uh, we start creating the storyboard. Um, it is important to know what storyline you're gonna have in the animation, whether it will have characters or not, or how many of them, or if it does not need the character at all. Uh, try to simplify the storyline as much as possible. Um, and what's more important, the storyline should be familiar for the audience uh, we are uh, creating for. Uh, for example, um, we created the animation uh, about the extreme political polarization uh, that is a hot topic in our country. Um, and uh, about the storyline, uh, we were thinking to make something uh, familiar to the audience, we, we wanted to show it, and um, it had a um, great response. Uh, and uh, now I will show you. <laughs> Hey, 
Have you ever been in such an unpleasant situation? Do you know what is happening? And why? Is this normal? Are emotional political discussions an essential part of a Georgian supra? Or is it a result of extreme polarization? What does this mean? Political opponents become arch enemies and attack their foe personally rather than explain why their idea or policy is better. Then, those who look for compromise and moderation have no chance. As a result, people will not express their opinion in a neutral point of view. The media has to take sides and thereby deepens the rift between political opponents. Politicians spend their time criticizing each other instead of discussing important matters. Don't let extreme political polarization influence you. Care for good arguments. We try not to complicate the animation with extra details uh, to emphasize the characters uh, and uh, their emotions and reactions. We tried not to use um, many colors uh, and um, had a simple style. So um, it helped uh, the topic. Uh, another thing is uh, you should always think about the ending. It is an important part of the animation because it ties the animation together. Um, usually it is quite hard to think about the effective uh, ending. Usually we um, brainstorm uh, for a long time and honestly it's quite hard to think about the effective ending. Um, uh, so we think what scene and what text will end the animation. Illustrate the ideas with symbols. Um, we use this technique pretty often uh, when we say something directly, but we show it with symbols uh, using associations. Um, this technique uh, helps the viewer to understand uh, the information or message uh, more easily. Uh, and I would like to show you some examples. Sabjotakavshiris periodchi sakartolos mosakhleoba qovoltsliurat erti procenti Zardma urbanizatsiam da emigratsiam didi gavlena moaxtina sakartolos mosakhleobis dinamikaze da mainz ram ganapiroba mosakhleobis zrdis iseti dramatuli tsrileba rom sakartolo mosakhleobis klebis machoneblit soplio ratingshi mesami adgilzea am shekitkhaze umravlesoba upasukhebda shobadobis klebam da es pasukhi ikneboda arastore martlats 1990 an tsleps shobadoba qovoltsliurat 40% tsirdeboda rats 10 leulshi 200000 nakleba akhal shobulsudris Magram, Oriatas Hutidan Oriatas Rats Lamde, Shobadova, Otta Hutmeti Procent it Gaizarda. Rasat Schelisha Utsko Quernis, Economic Urmazardam, Ojaheps Gauchin that Garant Irebuli, Uzrunel Opeli Momali Simedi. Sakartoloshi Shobadobis Machonebeli, Arimatebam Tlianet, Europis, Tawala Mezobeli Quernis Machonebels, Garda Turketisa da Azerbaijanisa. Masha Sadame, Raris Zori Pasuhi. Sarta Shoriso Migratia. Sabjota Periochi, Migratsis Processim Katsrat Control de Boda. Magram Sabjota Kavshiris Dashli Shemdek, Gomareobam Quetra Cheitsola. Daitsko Quernidan Mosakleobis Gadineba. Ratskampi Robebuliro, Ethnicurium Tiresobebis, Historial Samshobloshi, Masobrevi da Brunebit, Economicuri Sirtulebit, Sheyara Rebuli Complectebit, Samokaloko da Pirispirebita da Corruptit. Atasras Otmustatra, Oriatas Totmetslepshi, Masobrevi Migratsia Bishedegat, two millions of met Madami and Madatova Querana. The Jerjurabit Archans Raime Damaime de Bellinishani, Rum Migratsia Ahlo Momaval Shishetreba. Droa Uradreba Mivaxiot, Sarta Shoriso Migratsism Tower Mizazeps, the Miss Gavlena Sakartoloze. that we created um, about the population dynamics in Georgia and in the beginning um, we wanted to show uh, the population growth uh, ups and downs with the roller coaster by the year um, and this roller coaster was a good solution uh, to show these ups and downs uh, so try to be creative and um, show complicated things uh, in a simple way using the associations and symbols uh, which help the audience to understand the information. The second animation um, uh, is about the aging problem in Georgia. We tried to use symbols to show how hard it will be for young people uh, to, care, to take care of pensioners and we showed it with a big stone that symbolizes the burden. Orietas Totmetzels, Sakartoloshi Oveli Meshwi de Adamiani, Samus de Hutitslis and Uprosi Asakisiro. Orietas Ormos de Atitslistuski, Amasako Bridge Gupshi, Kneba Oveli Meotri Adamiani. Mosakleoba Berdeba. Sakartolo unda moemzatos. Raizos Mosakleobis da Berebas. Sitos Hlis Hangsliobis Rda. 
შობადობის დაბალი მაჩვენებელი და ახალგაზრდების ქვეყნიდან გადინება. რა გამოწვევების წინაშე გვაყენებს მოსახლეობის დაბერება. ცირდება სამუშაო ასაკის მოსახლეობის რაოდენობა, რომელსაც მოუწევს იზრუნოს უფრო მეტ ხანდაზმულ ადამიანზე. თუ 2014 წელს ერთ ხანდაზმულ ადამიანზე 5 სამუშაო ასაკის ადამიანი მოდიოდა, 2050 წლისთვის ეს მაჩვენებელი განახევრდება. პენსიონერების რაოდენობის ზრდა გაზრდის პენსიისა და ჯანდაცვის ხარჯებსაც. 2016 წელს სახელმწიფომ პენსიებად მილიარდ ნახევარ ლარზე მეტი გასცა. თუ პენსია იგივე დარჩება, 2050 წლისთვის ხარჯის 75% გაიზრდება. ასე თუ გაგრძელდა ხანდაზმულ მოსახლეობას ვეღარ შევინახავთ. თუმცა არის იმედი. მიუხედავად იმისა, რომ ხანდაზმული ადამიანებიდან თითქმის ყოველი მეორეა დასაქმებული, ისინი მეტწილად ფინანსურად არასაიმედო ნატურალურ მეურნეობას მისდევენ. თუ კი ხანდაზმულ მოსახლეობას უწყვეტ პროფესიულ განათლებაზე იქნება წდომა, მოიმატებს შანსი რომ მათი შრომა უკვე თანაზღაურებადი გახდეს. თავრობა უკვე მუშაობს კერძო დაგროვებითი საპენსიო სისტემის შექმნაზე, რომელიც თითოეულ დასაქმებულს მისცემს საშუალებას ხელფასიდან 6% შეინახოს, რასაც ის პენსიაში გასვლის შემდეგ მიიღებს. თუ ქალების საპენსიო ასაკიც გაუთანაბრდება მამაკაცებისას, ქალებსაც თანაბარი შესაძლებლობა ექნებათ საპენსიო დანაზოგისთვის. ეს დამატებითი თანხა შეავსებს პენსიების სიმცირეს და შესაძლებლობას მისცემს ადამიანებს იყიდონ წამლები, საკვები, დანსაცმელი და სხვა. მოსახლეობის დაბერება სერიოზული გამოწვევაა. თუ დღეს ვიმოქმედებთ, ეს იქნება საქართველოსა და მისი მოქალაქეებისთვის უკეთესი ცხოვრების დასაწყისი. One thing that I want to tell you is that uh, there is a incredible channel on YouTube Kurs Gazak in a shell uh, that explains um, complex uh, topics uh, in a simple way and they have an, they have very uh, incredible uh, solutions Human existence is scary and confusing A few hundred thousand years ago we became conscious and found ourselves in a strange place It was filled with other beings We could eat some some could eat us There was liquid stuff we could drink things we could use to make more things The daytime sky had a tiny yellow ball that warmed our skin The night sky was filled with beautiful lights. This place was obviously made for us. Something was watching over us. We were home. This made everything much less scary and confusing. But the older we got, the more we learned about the world and ourselves. We learned that the twinkling lights are not shining beautifully for us, they just are. We learned that we're not at the center of what we now call the universe and that it is much, much older than we thought. We learn that we're made of many little dead things which make up bigger things that are not dead for some reason and that we're just another temporary stage in a history going back over a billion years. We learned in all that we live on a moist speck of dust moving around a medium-sized star in a quiet region of one arm of an average galaxy which is part of a galaxy group that we will never leave. And this group is only one of thousands that together make up a galaxy supercluster. But even our supercluster is only one in thousands that make up what we call the observable universe. The universe might be a million times bigger, but we will never know. We could throw words around like 200 billion galaxies or trillions of stars or bazillions of planets, but all of these numbers mean nothing. Our brains can't comprehend these concepts. The universe is too big. There is too much of it. But size is not the most troubling concept we have to deal with. It's time, or more precisely, the time we have. If you're lucky enough to live to 100, you have 5200 weeks at your disposal. If you're 25 now, then you have 3900 weeks left. If you're going to die at 70, then there are 2340 weeks left. A lot of time, but also not really. And then what? Your biological processes will break down and the dynamic pattern that is you will stop being dynamic. It will dissolve until there is no you left. Some believe that there is a part of us we can't see or measure, but we have no way to find out. So, this life might be it and we might end up dead forever. This is less scary than it sounds though. If you don't remember the 13.75 billion years that went by before you existed, then the trillions and trillions and trillions of years that come after will pass in no time once you're gone. Close your eyes. Count to 1. That's how long forever feels. And as far as we know, in the end, the universe itself will die and nothing will ever change again. Our videos induce existential dread in many people, and the last few minutes probably haven't helped. 
So for once we want to offer a different way of looking at these things. An unscientific, subjective point of view. The philosophy of Kurzgesagt, if you want. Please take it with a grain of salt. We don't know any more about human existence than you do. We counter existential dread with optimistic nihilism. What do we mean by that? Well, to summarize, it seems very unlikely that 200 trillion trillion stars have been made for us. In a way, it feels like the cruelest joke in existence has been played on us. We became self-aware only to realize this story is not about us. While it is great to know about electrons and the powerhouse of the cell, science doesn't do a lot to make this less depressing. Okay, but so what? You only get one shot at life, which is scary, but it also sets you free. If the universe ends in heat death, every humiliation you suffer in your life will be forgotten. Every mistake you made will not matter in the end. Every bad thing you did will be voided. If our life is all we get to experience, then it's the only thing that matters. If the universe has no principles, the only principles relevant are the ones we decide on. If the universe has no purpose, then we get to dictate what its purpose is. Humans will most certainly cease to exist at some point. But before we do, we get to explore ourselves and the world around us. We get to experience feelings. We get to experience food, books, sunrises and being with each other. The fact that we're even able to think about these things is already kind of incredible. It's easy to think of ourselves as separated from everything, but this is not true. We are as much the universe as a neutron star, or a black hole, or a nebula. Even better actually, we are its thinking and feeling part, the sensory organs of the universe. We are truly free in a universe-sized playground. So we might as well aim to be happy and to build some kind of utopia in the stars. It's not as if we found out everything there is to know. We don't know why the rules of the universe are as they are, how life came into existence, what life is. We have no idea what consciousness is or if we are alone in the universe, but we can try to find some answers. There are billions of stars to visit, diseases to cure, people to help, happy feelings to be experienced and video games to finish. There is so much to do. So wrapping up, you've probably used up a good chunk of the time available to you. If this is our one shot at life, there is no reason not to have fun and live as happily as possible. Bonus points if you make the life of other people better. More bonus points if you help build a galactic human empire. Do the things that make you feel good. You get to decide whatever this means for you. Another animation that I want to show you is about the um, uh, bullying. Uh, and it's quite a sensitive uh, topic, uh, as you know, and uh, in this animation it's um, explained uh, in a very accurate way um, and uh, it contains also little data, but also this image is very emotional, um, so let's see. Ugly. <laughs> Idiot. Spastic. Freak. <laughs> Resards. Cripple. Slow. One leg. Fat. Bullying hurts and humiliates. One in two children in England worry about school bullying. Students who are seen as different are the ones most likely to be bullied. Recent research has revealed that at age seven, children with disabilities are more likely to be bullied all the time by their classmates. Children with special educational needs are also twice as likely to be bullied compared to those with no known disabilities. At age 15, young people with disabilities are at a higher risk of being excluded from friendship groups and experiencing cyberbullying, with classmates sharing embarrassing photos and spreading rumors on Facebook or Twitter. Students with special educational needs face the same risk. They are also more likely to be threatened or suffer physical violence. Children and young people who are bullied end up feeling isolated and alone. They are more likely to skip class, run away from home and self-harm. The scars of bullying stigma can last for a lifetime. Victims face a higher risk of being depressed in adulthood and of faring worse in the labor market. Many victims don't speak about their experiences. It doesn't have to be that way. Nobody should put up with bullying. We might all be different, but deserve to all be treated equally. Whether you face or witness bullying, reach out and make a noise. Share this video and help put an end to bullying. Um, 
when you uh, create the animation, always think about the style. Um, do you want to show with photos or illustrations or just with graphic elements? Uh, for example, um, uh, I like this animation. Uh, this is also an explanatory one, but it is uh, created in an artistic way. Uh, and uh, let's see. I've always been a dreamer. I dreamed of having the perfect family with the kids and the white picket fence. Something that was my own that I could be proud of. I got the marriage, I got the kids, but I was missing something. This panel in white coats started asking me questions. The one question I really couldn't answer for a long time was a very basic question. What do I want? When I woke up from that, things were much more clear. I thought I met the love of my life. We decided early on to have a child. By default, I was going to be a dad. But it was really a parent's role. My job was to make sure that he grew up as well as he could and teach him all the things he needed to do. Watch him crawl and watch him walk. I was always very proud of my wife and what she had to go through to have these kids. But part of me, I think, really did want to be in her position. The kicks you know, in her belly, I could feel them from the outside, but it just wasn't the same. Especially when she was having trouble feeding, I would have easily taken her, her place. I just wasn't physically able to. I didn't realize I was jealous in the moment. Maybe it was a subconscious thing. Once I made that connection that yes, I'm a parent and yes, I'm a woman, that's when I really connected that yes, I'm a mother. I could be the dad that everybody wants a dad to be, but it wasn't me. And when I first came out to my kids, he didn't have a title for me. My wife was very protective of the title of mom. I respected where she came from, but it was really difficult to hear. I'll never shy away from the fact that I'm their biological father. At the same time, I don't want them to see me that way. When I see pregnant women in the world, or I see just babies, I still am jealous. And I don't know why that is, that I need to have that connection. If I'm out in the world and people see me and want to call me mom, that's just kind of a societal thing. Oh, it's a woman with kids, must be a mother. But for me, it's deeper than that. It really is a need to want to carry and bear a child. Am I less of a mother because I didn't get to have that experience? It's almost like I haven't earned something. I'm a mother in all senses of the word, except the physical one. And there's nothing I can do about it. And that hurts. And will always hurt. My children actually made me a bracelet. Of the four charms that I got, the most important one on it is a heart that says mom. It was a validation from my wife that she was accepting this. I think I have trouble with things like, well, you were dad and now you're mom, or you're a man and now you're a woman. And I'm like, I, I think I was always the same person. My head just didn't connect those dots. People ask, why didn't you wait? Until the kids are grown and out of the house. I couldn't. Kids need strong parents, and I wasn't strong. I was sad and depressed. And so by finding myself, not only do I help myself, I help them. I don't think there's any much much of a bigger mother quality <laughs> than that. Inside, I didn't feel connected to motherhood at all. 
I just felt lost. One important thing is um, the typography in the animation. Uh, it also can help you to show you something because uh, um, typography itself can be uh, used as a character. Uh, it ha can have uh, like um, emotions um, and reactions. And good example for it uh, is this animation. Hello. Hey. Hey. Hello. Hello. Hi. <coughs> oh no. Um, you also can create the animation for advocacy and I want to show a very good example for it uh, and also this animation has a good quality of visual um, actually it doesn't have a voiceover uh, and um, yeah, the typography is, is used for it for storytelling uh, and uh, the music that it has uh, has a great role uh, and it's very emotional
uh, it is important thing um, to know where we are going to show the animation and where we are going to publish it uh, on YouTube, on TV or social media. So uh, we should define the legs of the animation. For example, when we publish our animation on uh, Facebook, um, it would be nice uh, if we have 30 seconds animation. Uh, it shouldn't be very long uh, because people scroll down a lot of information during the day uh, and uh, maybe they will get soon bored uh, and will not watch it uh, till the end. Um, but for example, if we publish uh, our animation on YouTube, um, it can be much longer because the YouTube uh, is a platform that is created for videos. Uh, beside the time and the length of the animation, think of uh, the type of the platform uh, and what I mean. Uh, for example, if you publish your animation on Facebook, uh, on, on uh, social media, uh, it will be nice if you have the subtitles for this animation uh, because of the scrolling uh, down the information. People um, don't use uh, in the concrete moment uh, headphones uh, and maybe they will not uh, go through the animation and turn on the uh, voice, uh, so think of it. But in the case of uh, YouTube, uh, you, you are free not to use uh, uh, the subtitles, but it will be nice also. Uh, in the case of um, a TV um, animation, uh, it will be nice if you have voiceover because uh, it affects uh, on uh, viewer. Uh, maybe someone will not uh, see your animation, but the voice will uh, attract uh, your audience. So how we started to work on the animations? Um, uh, you remember that uh, once the GIFs were very popular on Facebook, and when we were creating some facts, we, we were thinking that uh, this trend could be useful uh, for our facts and in the motions, these facts would be more effective for people. Uh, and um, we turned these facts into uh, animated uh, one. The softwares we use uh, to create the animations are mainly Adobe products, um, Illustrator, Photoshop and After Effects. Uh, that's it, uh, thank you for your attention. Uh, as we were limited in the time, I didn't go uh, too much uh, details. Uh, and if you have any questions, uh, please ask in the um, comments. Uh, and please share your experience, um, also your favorite videos. Um, Thank you again and good luck.